Good morning from Hong Kong. Sunny day today. Nobody's fighting right now. No tear gas, but probably later. Anyhow, two movies to talk about today. Um, there's a few more, but I'm only going to talk about two. The first one is Good Boys, which is the, um, the R-rated comedy hit of the summer, of the late summer. It opened, uh, opened yesterday here in Hong Kong. Opened, I think, two weeks ago in America and Canada. Um, not sure about the UK. I think it's already played in the UK, so I think we're a little late on this one. But um, about the film, if you've seen the film Super Bad from 2007, um, or um, yeah, if, if you're a fan of the film, you're going to like this one too. They're very similar. It's not uh, this. It's it's not a remake. It's not a reboot. But um, there, yeah, there's a lot of similarity between the two, and uh, maybe it's not surprising then that the producers of this film, Good Boys, are Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, the two guys who wrote Superbad. And um, I'm sure they had a lot of influence on uh, what happened and, uh, in the making of this, of this film. Now, the story is, if you're not familiar, there's um, three 12-year-olds. There's Max, played by Jacob Tremblay. He was the little kid in uh, the Oscar-winning film Room. Uh, there was Lu there's Lucas starring Keith L. Williams. I don't know that he's been in anything. And there's Thor, played by Brittany Noon, who is or was in uh, TV's Boardwalk Empire. And these kids, these boys, have been inseparable forever, but their bubble of innocence is about to break. And it's um, it's it's actually it's 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 even starting because they're they're now in middle school. They're no longer fifth grade. They're now sixth grade, and uh, their class is starting to form cliques. Their kid, the cool kids, are separating from the not so cool kids, and in the meantime, there's their adolescent hormones are starting to kick in. They're discovering girls, and that's putting even more pressure on how they want to spend their time and who they want to spend it with. And when these boys get invited to a classmate's house party, Max, who's uh, Jacob Tremblay's character, he sees the opportunity, he sees the party as an opportunity, to, or also a threat, to kiss Brixley. I love these new names. Brixley, played by Millie Davis, who was in Wonder, along with Jacob Tremblay. Um, and, uh, but he, the trouble is, he's never kissed a girl before. So that sends these boys on this wild adventure that involves drones, drugs, sex toys, stolen beer, teenage girls, frat boys, and the police, and a lot more, uh, to learn how to kiss properly before the party. And along the way, the boys learn a lot about themselves and about each other. Now, as one would expect with a Seth Rogen movie, Good Boys is very raunchy, with the boys dropping the F-bomb at every opportunity. Now, I know when I was that age, if I ever said that word, my mother would wash my mouth out with soap, but I hear 12-year-olds, I hear them, and they're using this, they're using that word and a whole lot more. So this is not surprising these days, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I think people my age might might uh, be surprised, but certainly young people. Yeah. But uh, there's even a joke uh, in the trailer that while the young boys can say that, the actors can say that word, they're not old enough legally to watch themselves say that word, uh, which is quite funny. Well, actually, um, the issue is not so much the word. The issue is really, you know, why it's R-rated. There's a whole lot of other stuff that... that um, uh, that I'm sure the, the censors do, do not want uh, kids that age to see, but you know 12-year-olds are going to find a way to see this movie anyways. In fact, I even saw a, uh, a, an interview that the boys gave that uh, they said before they, before they started filming this, they watched um, Superbad. So, you know, kids are going to find a way to see this film anyways. But I guess they, they, ha they have to try to put the gate up, uh, make an attempt to put the gate up so that the kids, kids that age don't get to see this film. But anyhow, back to the film. It, aside from being incredibly raunchy, it's an absolute riot with the kids discovering internet porn and naively misidentifying uh, their parents' sex toys and trying to be more worldly than they really are. And that, that so rings so true. Um, well, at least the last one does for me. Um, at its core, I'd say, though, that 
Good Boys is, is a surprisingly sweet story about growing up and starting to realize that you and your best friends are moving onto different paths. And that really surprised me about the film. You know, like leaving all the, 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 uh, the, 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 the F words aside. This is really, it's a coming of age story. And it's a very sweet story. I was really, really surprised about that. Now, I'd say the, this is, the film is the directorial debut of Gene Stuknitsky. I'm sure you've never heard of him. Um, but he, uh, he, co he, co he also co-wrote the film along with Lee Eisenberg. And the two of them had, have already uh, worked together on, on uh, the film Bad Teacher, which I never saw. And they wrote uh, a number of episodes of the American version of The Office. So um, maybe if you, you're a fan of The Office, I like the British one better. Um, you would know, you would definitely know the name. But this is his first uh, time directing a film. And, and I have to say, he does a great job. The two of them together, Eisenberg, also the writer, they, they, they really, it was a tightrope that they walked because this could have really been a huge disaster um, in terms of all the, the language and the drugs and all this other stuff. But they did it. They pulled it off. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a humorous story uh, about that brief moment in time when kids are still kids, but they're just becoming aware of the adult world that's that's around them, and and it's I'd say kudos to them, you know, good good writing on their part, and maybe you know maybe Seth Rogen and and uh, Evan Goldberg had something to do with that, I don't know, but in terms of the performances, I say all the kids they put in really uh, good performances, earnest performances, but I have to, as I was watching it, I was I was thinking how much do these kids know about what they were saying? Did they understand about what they were saying before the film started? You know, when they, when they sat down for, for a table reading, you know, the first time they read, or maybe they read the you know, first time they read the script, did they know what all those words are that they you know, these jokes that are in the film and all these words? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe 12 year olds are far more worldly than, than I certainly was at that age. But, you know, some of the, some of the lines uh, really ring true for when I was a 12 year old. I didn't, I certainly didn't know what half those words meant. Uh, you know, or or what what the sex toys were? I wouldn't. I didn't have a clue. But these kids are these kids are completely clueless, which makes it very very funny. Now, of the three kids, I like I like Keith L. Williams the best. He's he's um, he's the African American kid. This he is a riot, and he, he for his age, he's twelve years old, so he was probably eleven when the film was made. It was made last summer. Um, he has an incredible knack for for comedic timing and and you know I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him especially him um in in more films i don't know what else he's working on for jacob trombley he's going to be he's in this film it's coming out in a couple of weeks i think it's with ewan mcgregor for the life of me let me just see what what it's called uh, um uh, i know it's coming out in a few weeks but I can't, uh, shoot, I can't remember what it's called. But, um, anyhow. And the other one, Brady Dune, I don't, I don't know what he's up to. Um, but anyhow, looking forward to seeing him. So, if you can handle all the F words, this is really a good story. It's got a huge heart, this story. And, and I liked it. I really did enjoy it. So, if you're looking for a good laugh, and boy, in Hong Kong, we really need to laugh right about now. So um, I highly recommend this film. If you can handle all the F words, um, for sure, go see it. So, uh, so that's called Good Boys, who are not so well. They are good boys. You know, deep down, that's the funny thing. You know, they're bad. They want to be bad. That's the funny thing. They want to be bad, but deep down, they really are good boys. So uh, quite enjoyable. Second film I want to talk about is Exit. It's a Korean film. Um, don't ask me to say the name in Korean, although I understand it does sound like exit. Um, and, uh, this is a, this is a sort of a disaster film adventure, action comedy. Uh, <laughs> go figure. And, and you know what? Disaster films can be hit or miss propositions, even when you have a big name action star in front of the camera and an experienced director behind. There's been plenty of failures in that area. But when you throw in some broad comedy, some social commentary, a pretty boy actor who has green hair, I gotta say, um, 
And 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 it looks like this this actor. If he was in an arm wrestling match with a twelve year old boy, he'd lose. <laughs> no, he was he was completely the wrong body type for what this 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 character required to do. Um, and and you have a and if you throw in a director, a writer director, no less, who's making his future debut, you've got all the makings of a disaster of a different kind of disaster. But that's what this film. Is you? It's just it's it it goes beyond logic that this film could be as good. <laughs> I don't want to say this film is good, but but as successful. Let's say as successful as this film is. I mean, it's really strange. Now the story is Young Nam, played by Cho Jung Sok. I have no idea who he is because I don't know my Korean actors. Um, his adult life is a colossal failure. Now, since graduating from university a few years earlier, the young man's been unable to land a job and to pass time when he's not camped out in his bedroom in his parents' home. I believe in Seoul it is. Um, he heads to the local park where he works out on the jungle gym in full view of the neighborhood's little old ladies who love staring at him and, um, and the young kids who like taunting him. And he enjoys rock climbing, but he's not even good at that. You know, he's, he, you know, he does it, he's okay. Because we see while he was in university, he lost a race up a rock face against a fellow student, a woman no less, uh, by the name of Weeju, played by K-pop star Yuna. And uh, to add salt to that wound, you know, losing to, to a woman, uh, Yuna spurned his romantic advances and told him that she just wanted to be friends with him. So his life is, is really a bit of a mess. So for his mother's 70th birthday, Young Nam arranges to have her party at a banquet hall where he knows that Weiju works as an assistant manager. And while at the event, a disgruntled scientist releases a lethal gas uh, nearby, out on the street, and when the party guests realize that their lives are in imminent danger and there's no safe way out of the building, Young Nam decides to spring into action and use his rock climbing training to save not only his family, but Weiju. So that's what the story is about. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to say it's a good film. It's, it's, a, it's a wild film. You know, it's, this is, for the most part, it's an enjoyable roller coaster ride that will leave audiences, certainly left me, exhausted and frustrated. <laughs> you know, I, I, I sort of came out with a smile on my face because it's bizarre, you know, it's wacky. But, and and it's, like, it's, it's high adrenaline, let's put it that way, high adrenaline. The writer-director Lee Sang-gun, as I said, this is his first film, he's infused his story of a young man who goes from zero to hero with a fair bit of over-the-top humor. Now, young man's family members, they love to smack each other, <laughs> which, is, which is quite funny. So he uses humor like that to keep the story light. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't always work. You know, the smacking works, but some of the other stuff doesn't always work. Like, for example, Weiju's boss keeps hitting on her. You know, that's like, come on, you know. Uh, you know, I know the Me Too movement hasn't quite made it to Korea yet, but, you know, like, I, 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 I'm bothered with a lot of Korean films that the directors don't even, don't even try to move the ball forward in terms in terms of equality. You know, yeah, equality. You know, there was a film a few weeks ago I reviewed called Mrs. and Miss Cops or Miss and Mrs. Cops. It's actually it was supposed to play here and then it's, it's um it they delayed it. The, the distributor pulled it at the last minute. It's opening in a couple of weeks, so it hasn't played yet in Hong Kong. But that one also it's very sexist. And I think, come on, it's 2020 already, enough with the sexism in Korea. You know, yes, Korea, South Korea is a sexist country, but you know what? The directors need to take a lead a little bit and push the country forward in terms of equality. And this, I find this film also, it's, it's um, you know, it, 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 it doesn't push the ball forward, and that's disappointing. But anyhow, enough of that, enough of my pontificating. But as we've seen... And if, uh, you know, I, uh, what did I want to say? I forgot what I wanted to say. But, you know, one of the other things that, that 
also doesn't work is, is the actor Cho. As I said, he's the completely wrong body type for this. He's no Tom Cruise. He's no Bruce Willis. He's no Dwayne Johnson. You know, with his slightly pudgy body, it's hard to believe that young Nan could climb up a stepladder, much less the side of a, of a skyscraper. So, but that's what green screens are for. You know, as I, I was watching the film with a friend, I said, my nephew is a rock climber. And my nephew has probably got zero body fat on him. I mean, he is like lean beyond belief. And this, this actor is anything but lean. So, so I thought, come on, not, not realistic at all. But, you know, anyhow. But, you know, leaving all that aside, the film exit, it's a good allegory about, about a young man who can't seem to climb up the corporate ladder, but he finds the inner strength to reach the top regardless, and even in spite of all the obstacles that are, th that are thrown his way. So that's where the social commentary comes in. Now, to its credit, I'd say the family, Young Nam's family, they are a riot, uh, you know, with the, sm with the smacking. There is a lot of, um, you know, passive-aggressive love there going on there. And uh, I particularly enjoyed his father, Jung Su, played by Park In Hwan. He was the father in The Odd Family, Zombie on Sale, which, uh, which I reviewed a few weeks ago. I actually like that film. Um, crazy, though. Oh, crazy, but I liked it. Um, and the father, he refuses to be a passive participant in his son's journey of self-discovery. So I, I enjoyed... I enjoyed the character and I enjoyed the actor in that role. Now, my beef with the film, aside from being sexist and not real, not realistic in the least, it comes at the end when you know this is ultimately, you know, ultimately, you know, in this whole story, this is a boy gets girl, boy, you know, boy meets girl, boy loses, gets girl, boy loses. Well, he doesn't really get her, but he loses a girl and then he gets her back again. And you know that this is, you know, this is the direction. So I'm not revealing anything here, but. You know, at the end, when, when, he, when he gets her, he doesn't really get her. You know, it's like, it doesn't really come together in a convincing way. And, and what I would have liked to have seen, you know, he, he, you know, he's sort of like, he, they're looking at each other. I'm going to reveal. He, they're looking at each other and he's thinking, should I kiss her? Should I not kiss her? And she's gone, kiss me already. You know, this is what's going in, into their heads. I would have liked to have seen her kiss him. And look, I again, I know South Korea women don't do that. But come on, it's almost 2020. Take a risk, South Korean filmmakers. <laughs> you know, come on, that would have been nice. And you know what? You do it, and everybody in South Korea goes, "Oh my God, I can't believe a woman kissed a man." Well, you know what? Do it. So that's my big beef with this film, aside from being sexist and unrealistic and having an actor that doesn't look like he can climb up a, a ladder, much less the side of a skyscraper. But anyhow, I sort of enjoyed the movie. You know, I sort of enjoyed I didn't love it, but I sort of enjoyed it. You know, and I can see that this is going to, Hollywood's probably going to get their hands on this film. The film's done extremely well globally. It's played in, you know, Quite a few, I think, twenty-four countries already. It's done extremely well. I can see that Hollywood's going to take this film and adapt it. Hopefully, they'll put somebody like Zac Efron <laughs> in that role. Somebody who looks like he, you know, he's got the body type to uh, to uh, to climb that. I, if they do it, I hope they take out some of the broad comedy. I like the comedy, but some of it, you know, like with the with the. Um, with the manager who hits on the assistant manager. I didn't like that. So we'll see, you know, we'll see if Hollywood does it. But if they do, remember you heard it here first. So that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about today. Quite short. So um, have a great week, a great weekend, and um, see you next week.